Switch and Go Dinos is a brand new toy line created by electronic toy maker VTech for fall 2012. As of this time, it has no dedicated storyline, TV series, collectible card game, or any other interactive media of that kind. It's just the toys. With that said, let's get on with it, shall we? So, this is Ton the Stegosaurus. His friends call him Ton the Stegosaurus because he's a ton of fun. See? It even says it on the back of the box. Compared to the detail of things that I usually re review for CollectionDX.com, this one is not as detailed, but it does has, have a couple little panel lines like right here. That's about it. Switch and Go Dino's logo right there. Draws your eye to it quite nicely, I might note. Not much to it, really. Unfortunately, this toy does not have any posability to it whatsoever. Well, you could do that, but it's for the transformation. This is a free, uh, free turning joint. It doesn't stay up. So, yeah. And that's because, for safety's sake, you actually pop off his jaw. Um, you have to intentionally pop it off, but... Uh, now that it's there, this is annoying. There we go. Okay. The speaker for the toy is actually located inside the head, inside the mouth. How about that? That's pretty awesome. Battery compartment down here takes two AA batteries. And... Not much else to say at this point. Same on one side as it is on the other. And that's it. Oh yeah, before I forget, these front two bony plates here are the only pieces that have soft PVC in them. Everything else, including the jaw, is made of hard ABS plastic. That said, some joints ratchet, these ratchet, but these pieces here do not. So some pieces ratchet, some don't. This one does, but there isn't much point to it, and it's not... You know, very strong here, but whatever. You're going to lift up on his back a little bit. And that will free his legs. These do not ratchet, but they will snap into place. There's a little bubble thingy sitting there, so. And that goes down. This also does not ratchet into place. It just rests there with gravity. See? And there you have Ton in vehicle mode ton in vehicle mode is basically just your average little sports coupe that has a little gray fender and a little gray surfboard sitting on it. The decals are nicely placed, I might note. There are not many of them here, 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 that's it. Nothing particularly special. And also here. Well placed, minimalistic, no worry about trying to pry them off either. So, you know, that's good. And there's the bottom there again. The noise comes from the engine block. How about that? I'm already liking this thing. Now, as I said at the beginning of this video, VTech is an electronic toy manufacturer. Mostly, the vast majority of it is education oriented. Switch and Go Dinos does have some educational purposes for it, but it's more on the trivial side than it is to do anything serious with it. And so for them to not put an electronic feature in here of some kind would probably be rather negligent, considering we're dealing with dinosaurs and vehicles, something that every boy ages five to eight dreams about every single night. Me? Not so much. So, getting on with it, pressing any of the four buttons here around the screen will activate ton. Start your engine! Come on, let's roll! Ladies and gentlemen, meet Ton. Now he has three drivers available to him. Choose the driver. Each one has its own. Choose the driver. Each one has its own animations and animation reactions, but the sound effects are more or less the same. Turn my wheels. And he'll also prompt you to play with him once in a while. Now, for convenience yeah. or to save yourself from a bit of a headache, VTech generously provided a volume option. For my own sanity, I keep it on the lowest setting. Hi. 
All right, all right. He does that. Action sound effects on this side. Blah, blah, blah. There's about four or five of those. And then over here... want to shut him up, you can do one of two things. Hold down one of the buttons, and you can shut him up that way. Or, if you leave it alone for about a minute, he'll turn himself off automatically. VTech, you have answered the prayers of any parent of a young child. Right there. By including an on-off switch, you are going to receive many blessings. I promise you. And you also received mine as well. Thank you. Interacting with Ton and Dynamo isn't really all that different either, although in this case the front plates do have a tendency to obstruct the buttons a little bit. Dude, I'm Ton, the Stegosaurus. Let's chill. <laughs> all right, dude. Again, you have the option for three different sets of eyes this time. Each one comes with its own animation and unique look. But it behaves more or less, all three eyes behave more or less the same way. It doesn't change his personality, though. Again, volume control. Rock on! Yeah, he does that. I tend to leave these eyes because they have a nice Stewie Griffin glare to them. And then over on this side, it gets a little more interesting. The stuff that he says in dino mode is a little more engaging. A little. I'm a quadruped. I walk on four legs. And I walk slow. I go everywhere with my stegosaurus buds. We live in groups called herds. So as you can see, you get a little bit of different kinds of interactions left and right. Later. And once more, you can turn them off as you want to. Now there's one other thing he was saying earlier in vehicle mode, but it actually applies to both modes. He'll say frequently, turn my wheels. Well, what does that mean? So you have them turned on. Start your And you'll frequently hear hear him prompt you not just to play with him, but you'll also hear him. Turn my wheels. You'll hear him say that specifically. So what you want to do? Roll him around. Believe it or not, this is actually a smart toy. Not only does it know which mode it's in, but it also knows when you're moving the wheels. The trigger is actually under the left wheel here. So when you turn it, you get this. And of course, the animation's kind of similar for all of them. and so on and so on and so forth. However, when he's in dyno mode, things get a little bit differently. When you spin the same wheel, you get this.
the sound of heavy footprints falling. Now something else I forgot to mention a moment ago when I had him in dyno mode. The name's yeah, 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 yeah. Later. Is that he actually rolls about on four wheels. Two small wheels back here, and then the main mode switching wheels right here. Mode switching wheels, that sounded terrible. Now, because not everything ratchets into position as tightly as you would like, this left leg actually has a tendency to get loose. You just push it in, and it'll be fine. Technically, it's supposed to lock into place, but whatever, when it transforms. But anyways, just to prevent the rest of the plastic from getting scratched up, there's actually a little uh, tab that sits on the bottom here. It's real tiny. You can just see it there, and that'll that'll be the only piece that gets scratched up. And you can see it's already it's the the the, the paint is already worn off right there. But you know that's to be expected because they didn't want to have the entire underfoot get scratched up. Why it is they didn't put more wheels underneath there? Not quite sure. It probably has something to do with how much space they had available during the transition between dyno and vehicle mode. So, can I really fault them for that? Not necessarily. One other thing I want to go through. Is that during his conversion process, he actually does something kind of cool. It's actually a surprisingly smart toy. It actually not only does it know which mode it's in, but it also makes note of the fact that you're transitioning. Come on. I forgot to mention the transition between vehicle into dyno mode is not quite as smooth. You actually do have to take the time to push this up. Whereas if you're going back to vehicle mode, you can just unflip things. It's no big issue. Oh, shut up. Later. Oh, I know. Maybe if I'd left him alone for a minute or so, he would have stopped talking all by himself. How about that? I kind of like how this new Switch and Go Dinos line is kind of shameless in the way that it transforms from a car into a robotic dinosaur. Now that I can actually get behind. It actually kind of gives it a Bayformer feel, like you don't really know which, which mode it's in. However, unlike Hasbro's Transformers brand, this one actually doesn't try to really bring out any dinosaur-esque features to it. Yeah, it's got bony plates, but they don't really look like bony plates. It's, they're just kind of shaped like it, whatever. The mouth is pretty much the only thing that's like actually legitimately animal about it. The feet are, you know, they're kind of visible in vehicle mode. The tail, I don't know. Stegosaurus is supposed to have spikes on its tail. It just kind of has this little, kind of strange muted grill pattern to it, whatever. If that's the case, why does it have more grill stuff back here? Anyways, I don't really mind the fact that the wheels are visible. It it kind of does the thing that Hasbro's Transformers don't do. And that is, Hasbro Transformers, they try to make it look more like an animal than they do a robot. This thing just kind of glosses over it and says, hey, you know what? It's a transforming toy, and it's going to be, it's going to look like this. So it's unapologetic about the fact that it has a lot more vehicle parts than it does animal parts. And, you know, I'm kind of grateful for that. That's, it's, that's a nice change for a change. You know, it doesn't try to hide the fact that it's a dinosaur disguised as a vehicle. Outrageous as that is, yes, I know, but still, I kind of like that they did that. It's different, but it's not necessarily bad. The proportions are also cute enough. You know, I, I kind of wish the tail had been a little bit longer, maybe have it droop down a little further, have the tail be down a little further, and you know, have it actually come out where a tail usually comes out. But for the most part, it kind of retains the classic uh, stegosaurus shape. I almost said triceratops for some reason. It retains the classic triceratops, uh, I just did it right there, stegosaurus shape. Yeah. I was actually considering getting the triceratops version, but... I'll get to that in a moment. Anyways, yeah, back legs are a little small, but they actually are taller. In fact, one of the facts he says is that his back legs are so tall, it gives his back that kind of arched look. And so, yeah, there's a big old ugly gap right here, and there's kind of a gap here, and, well, hello. 
but you know, I, I like the proportions of it. I don't really have much of a problem there. The, the head is unusually big. The other thing I like, though, is that it's surprisingly compact for a transforming toy. And what do I mean by that? It's got this huge non-moving block going right through the middle of it. And it's got this section here, this whole thing back here, and these panels here that moves around it. But it's convenient enough in the way that it moves around. Things move around in such a way that you don't get distracted by the fact that it's a huge clump of electronics sitting in the middle that you don't really pay attention to it. So it's not really all that distracting. One thing that is distracting, though, is he, believe it or not, he actually is a little on the front heavy side. He's actually not touching the wheels in back here just because of all the stuff sitting up front here. So that's probably the reason, by the way, it's got those little tabs on thrones because they knew it would be a little front heavy. It would just be flat out resting on the front legs on those painted claws right there. So, eh, whatever. Anyways, proportions aside, it's just a cute little dinosaur thingy that has a bunch of wheels and a gapping butt void. Can't complain about it. Yeah, I wish the mouth had been... I wish that the, the jaw had not been an actual jaw with a big old hole in it, but on the other hand, they were probably concerned about the sound getting absorbed by the jaw. VTech for your Switch and Go Dinos version 2, don't worry about that too much. It'll just bounce off the inside. I wouldn't worry about it too much. And even then... Well, yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah, I mean, there was no reason for that to be open up like that. I can understand why they did it. I'm telling you right now, VTech, from one toy collector to a toy manufacturer, don't worry about it. It'll be loud enough. Thankfully, you've got that volume switch in there, so you actually have some options in there. Don't worry about it too much. The transformation process is actually the key ingredient as to why I got Ton the Stegosaurus specifically, and that is he's the only one of the basic 1599 switch and go dinos that I couldn't figure out how it transforms right off the bat. Yeah, I looked at the box, I was like, oh, okay, this is interesting, but I couldn't quite figure out how it transformed. And it wasn't, I mean, I got this, no big deal, flip the tail, whatever, mouth is going to disappear in some way, but I couldn't figure out why it is that the big back wheels ended up in front. And then I realized, and then, so I was like, it's an interesting little puzzle, it's that, it's that complete flip around of the legs. It goes from the back to the front. That's pretty cool. That's actually very cool. So yeah, again, cute little sports car with a gray fender and a surfboard sitting on the top. Not like we haven't seen that one before, by the way. And again, cutely proportioned little vehicle. Rolls quite smoothly. Very nice. No suspension. Thank you very much. One thing does interest me, though, and I've looked at all of the other Switch and Go dinos. There's actually eight of them right now. This is only one of them. I'm trying to figure out what the hook here, and the yellow hook here is. I can't quite figure out what those are for. They're not going to be used on, what's it called, Brock, the Brontosaurus, Brachiosaurus, something like that. It doesn't get used on those, so I'm not quite certain what they've got planned with that. Maybe they're going to try and turn these into a train or something like that. You know, you hook one to the other and da-da-da-da-da down the line. That'd be my guess. Otherwise, it's just a cute little vehicle with taillights. Sweet. Can't complain about much right here. This is actually very pleasing. It's got an electric feature built into it. It's a transformer, but it's not the typical dinosaur transforms into a robot. Or, on the on the flip side of that, dinosaur, or on the flip side of that, a car that transforms into a robot. Or a vehicle or whatever. There are actually some non-cars, but, you know, I'll, car I'll review those another time, maybe. I just like the fact that it, it just kind of puts a spin on the classic transformable toy thing, and that's kind of the big appeal to it. And then, on top of that, well, yeah, okay, so, but anyways, I like that it's a transforming robot, blah, 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 it's a robot dinosaur that changes into a car, you know, and it's not, it's not ashamed of, sh of, of it's not going to try and deny that fact. Uh, the electronic features actually shine really well in this toy. Not, it's, it's a smart toy. It's not just press one button for vehicle mode only and then press the other button for dinosaur mode. No. I mean, it actually transitions, and then the buttons don't really change their functions. This remains the character changing button. Character changing. Nice idea. I actually like that. Volume control. God bless you. Sound effects only. Okay. I can live with that. That's good. Um, fun facts messed up with fun phrases? Hey, why not? I don't have a problem with that, and I'm sure little kids won't either. It mixes up the fun with the educational. 
The whole point of the Switch and Go Dinos line is that it took two things that young boys really like, dinosaurs and vehicles, and put them together into one. And to me, Switch and Go Dinos pulls that off very well. And so that's why this 30-year-old picked up a Switch and Go Dinos toy, because, well, it's adorable and it's actually kind of smart. Now, if only Super Sentai would have something like this. <sighs> ew! No! No! Ew! Oh, bad idea! Bad idea! Ew! Ew! No! Forget it! Forget it! Bad idea! Forget I even brought it up! Just... No! Oh, and also, Windows Live Movie Maker can go f*** itself with a straw. This is AveUnit4A for CollectionDX.com, signing off.